This is Aesthetically Trained, the podcast. Pushing you to year-on-year progression. With your host, Ross McKinley. Yo, Ross McKinley, Aesthetically Trained, the podcast. And today, as you can see, I've got a very special guest. One of my good pals. I'm very fortunate to have met Dan a few years ago on a business mastermind, as, uh, as people like to call them, which is essentially men going away and getting pissed together to talk about business. But Dan Highcock is one of my good pals. Dan, welcome. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. I'm very well, very well. And yourself? Excellent. I'm good, mate. I'm good. Why? Going with a different angle today, different lighting. So people watching on YouTube, let us know what you think of this little setup. Is it better? How, how does it look? Um, so Dan, for the lads and the men listening that don't know you, I'll just throw out a, a few words first. Why I got Dan on, he's incredible. It, it's selling himself. He's got unbelievable energy. He's got a great story behind him. But not only that, he's been a Paralympic athlete. He's fucking wheelchair basketball professional. He's done loads of cool shit. So Dan... I hope I haven't stolen your thunder too much there, mate. But for the people listening, who are you? I'm just a big, ugly, hairy arsehole from other <laughs> people, basically, that's almost 40 years old. But <laughs> historically, like, like you've just said, uh, I'm a retired professional wheelchair basketball player. Uh, played all over Europe professionally. Won all sorts of things. Uh, fortunately, I got to represent my country as well. Um, in World Championships, European Championships, Paralympics, uh, also an online coach, um, health, fitness, nutrition, mindset, you know, it's sort of a, a, a I, I try and adopt an all-in-one approach with, with people in the way that I coach and the programs that I run. Um, I'm an insanely proud dad. Uh, that's basically it. I, I love eating. I like a yeah. beer. I uh, like having fun. I like having a laugh. That's why I get on with Ross, I think. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> so I think we met in we met in 2019, I think, in, in Thailand yeah. in, in a yeah, mastermind yeah, yeah. that we're both a part of. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're trained together a little bit and we're there to work. As I say, the hilarious thing of when groups of men go away to work on business and inevitably you do your half your morning is very hungover trying to talk about business and then you you, you get it you get it again up the afternoon. But they're good times, aren't they? And we're certainly you end up having relationships like this where you meet people that are on a similar level and, and we've kind of kept in touch since then and, and one of the things for me why I wanted to get down on for everyone is, is like I mentioned earlier in terms of his mindset I think he's absolutely excellent um, but there's so many ups and downs of in his life which we're going to get into which he's overcome and there's so many good stories for all the men listening and as he said I was pleased to mention it he is he's a father as well which I kind of give you those experiences but I love having people on who can relate to the people that are listening. So how did it all all start for you, Dan, in terms of your coaching, going back to that first, and, and wheelchair basketball and everything else? Why would you say, uh, how, well, how did you get into wheelchair basketball, I guess, first, and then also then now coaching and helping men like you do? Right, okay. So, uh, you know, going back, fuck, how, like, so if I'm 39 now, how many years is that? Um, about, like, 20, 26 years 27 years was when I started high school. <clears throat> At this moment in time, I was I was fully wheelchair bound, couldn't walk, and obviously, when you know there was like football, rugby, cross country, or whatever it was that the other kids were doing, I was just like go and sit in a classroom, wait the hour out until the lesson passed. <clears throat> and as time went on, um, we got a new PE teacher that was a basketball fan, and. He told me that you know you you can play wheel uh, you can play basketball in a wheelchair. I was like okay, and he said I'm going to try and source some details out for you. Anyhow, he, he put me in contact with the local team in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, my grandparents took me to my first session. I absolutely fell in love with it straight away, um, and then I started going once a week. Developed into going twice a week to me being completely fucking school. Basketball. It's like sleeping with a basketball cuddling it. Right. And um, I started to go to a little um, at school. There was like a little room with a little multi gym. Do you remember the multi gyms? They, used to, they might still sell them at Argos, like York, York Fitness. Yeah. Yeah. Like they had just like the, the wasteliest multi gym in, in the school. But I, um, the teacher used to let me go in there during the PE lesson. So I, I was started to lift weights from a very early age. <clears throat> so I, I was really interested in how that changed your 
it did um, a real obsession with all things training that developed into a nutrition point of view as well as, as years went on. Yeah. And when I started to play basketball professionally in later years, I used to help people um, with the training and nutrition, but just for fun. And it was in, it was in 2013, I think it was. I, I thought, fuck, well, I, I can't play basketball forever. Uh, fortunately, with wheelchair basketball, if you stay in good nick, you can, you can probably get to about 44, 45. So, you know, potentially I, I, I could go and play for another good few years if yeah. I stay healthy. Um, but ultimately, I can't do it forever. Um, and I, I, I left school at 16 to, to pursue this. So I don't have any fucking, you know, any, you know, quote unquote things to go into yeah. other than this. Yeah. Um, so it, it made sense for me to do something alongside my sport. And, and I thought I want to do online coaching because I I came across it on online. So I just started to do a lot, loads of courses, learning loads more about what I was doing. Uh, weirdly enough, found out that everything I was doing was fucking ancient and prehistoric. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a way to do things, uh, which I'm not to say that it didn't work, but it was far from fucking optimal. I, as you know, uh, a lot of people are still doing the things that I thought was the right thing to do going back 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with training nutrition, it's always sort of progressing bit by bit. Um, and yeah, I, I just got into coaching, started running the business alongside and fortunately, I was in a position where I could retire from basketball last year, um, which was for personal reasons more so than 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 I actually wanted to. Yeah. Um, but that's how I am where I am right now. Awesome. So to sum up there, in case anyone missed that, you are in a wheelchair, completely couldn't walk until yeah. until what age? 13, 13 and a half, something like that. And so, like, you got told... Can yeah, I so I, I had a motorbike accident when I was five. Um, I, I, me and my cousin used to have mini mo motocross bikes. They got bought for us for Christmas from my grandfather. Yeah. And you could ride his without stabilizers a lot quicker than, than I could. And I remember... I, I'm just sat in my mum's house, and, and the field where I crashed is about 30 foot away. Yeah. It's a big rugby field. <clears throat> and, I, and I did a lap without the stabilizers on. And my uncle, who was with me at the time, said, well, go on, if you, if you can do another lap without stabilizers, we'll bring you back out on the bikes tomorrow. So um, dickhead here managed to locate out of a big, massive field, a rugby post. <laughs> and decided right. I wanted to drive at the rugby post. So obviously, I didn't decide I wanted to, but I, I managed to locate a rugby post um, on my way around. Uh, I opened the throttle up. It was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a winter morning, so I had all the gear on. Um, everything steamed over and I just opened the throttle but up, lost control of the bike and just bump, hit this rugby post and the, the handlebars swung and trapped me across my waist. The inertia obviously tried to throw me over the bike because I was trapped, just sort of just crushed everything. So at the moment I, I've got like half a pelvis on one side. I've, I've just basically can't even, I can't even have a hip replacement because there's no bone there to attach anything to. Right. It's, all, it's, all, it's almost like my legs hanging on by a thread, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I was in hospital for six, seven months. Um, then I was in a full body plastic cast from neck down to both feet for um, another four or five months. can't remember the, the exact time, but it was roughly that. And yeah, then I got told I would never walk in. And that, that was me. That was me, you know, in a wheelchair. And, you know, going back... All those years, it was a little bit different than it is now being in, you know, sort of, <laughs> I think back then, if you were in a wheelchair, some families used to just fucking keep you in the back room. Sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, fortunately, I th they actually wanted to send me to a special needs school. There was nothing wrong with me upstairs. Yeah. You know, I'd like to think I'm quite intelligent in some respects, but yeah. <laughs> maybe not in others, but uh yeah, the, 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 the authorities, just purely on the fact that I was in a wheelchair, wanted to send me to a special needs school. And my, mom had, my mom had to fight to the nail to get me into a regular school. And then, so, so, um, so, so with, sorry to interrupt you, bro, with yep. what, I, what, I, what my first question was, was going to be for you, me yep. already, already knowing this and wanting you to, to, to share it with the, with the men listening is, do you think your, your ability, both in terms of sport, that in life, 
overcoming adversity, if you like. Where do you think that's come from? What What do you think give you the give you the attitude of you know you're not going to walk anymore, and you being like, "Fuck it, I'm going to try." And then and then since then, obviously you you're successful with sport and, and obviously competing at the Olympics and these things. Do you think that's all tied into this ability or this what is it a resilience? Would you say is it a, was it confidence? What would you say? Yeah, so I, I I guess I learned a very important lesson in life without even knowing so on persistence and resilience at a very early age. So when I started primary school, because I was in I was in a wheelchair, I got bullied terribly, like really really bad. Um, I'll give you an example of one of the, the worst kinds. I mean, I, there was all the verbal stuff, of course, but there was one time I got pushed to the top end of a football field mm -hmm. at the school tipped out of the wheelchair and they actually took my wheelchair back to school. I had to literally crawl back to school. <clears throat> um, just things like that. Um, kids are cunts, aren't they? Yeah, kids are fucking, kids are awful, mate, in some respects. Um, some of them are anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I, fr from a very early age, I, I had this preconceived idea that there was something fucking wrong with me. There was, you know, I'm not the same as everybody else. Why, is, why are they doing this to me? Um, obviously, I could see it was something different, but you, you know, your mind does. Your mind, your, your mind gets hardwired to think all these things about yourself from a very early age. And yeah, um, I I thought there was something wrong with me. It wasn't good enough to be like everybody else. Blah 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 blah. Um, and when I got to high school, I thought, fuck this. Like, I wanna I wanna walk again. And do you know what the mad thing is? I've done a lot of reflecting on this over the years, and I. It wasn't a case of I wanted to walk because I wanted to walk. I wanted to walk because I wanted to be like everybody else. I yeah. thought I would be accepted. Uh, I, I wouldn't get bullied and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was that. I think that was my my driving force. And how I got walking myself was um, I used to have a little chair in, in my mum's living room. And she when she'd go out, I'd literally sort of um, like the chair that I'm on here. If you yeah. see that, I'd like sort of stand up and because one one leg's perfectly fine. So I'd sort of hoist myself up and, and shuffle around with my leg and just drag the other one. Um, and I'd do like a lap of the chair, sit back down. Because mm -hmm. um, my mum used to fucking go bonkers if she saw me trying to do something because she thought like she was told from the specialist that it was bad for me and it would make things worse. Anyhow, so that, that progressed into doing two laps Three laps, bit of progressive overload, I guess. <laughs> Four yeah. laps, laps. We've talked a lot uh, about that on this podcast, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then that progressed on to uh, talking about the multi gym that I was telling you about before. I had an exercise bike, mm -hmm. so I started to, to sort of tell porky pies to my mum, saying I was stopping behind at fucking chess club or something daft like that, and stopping behind after school and going in there and getting on the exercise bike and you know relatively quickly within the space of sort of 12 18 months i was i was taking steps on aided walking um to a point where one of the bullies in the year at school came and started on me and i stood up out the wheelchair and <laughs> dropped him get in <laughs> yeah yeah and, and you know what? From, from that moment on i've never took shit off anybody in my life ever since uh, that was a big big confidence thing for me that yeah back then um, because initially okay. now, obviously, obviously, people can't can't see if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure that yep. you fucking smash the like button if you're watching on YouTube and drop a comment after. But whatever you're watching on or listening, what you won't see with Dan is Dan's obviously sat down as am I. But you wouldn't necessarily, you Dan, initially notice anymore that you have a, a disability. If you want to call it, like you have an injury. Um, mm. And certainly, yeah. when I first met you. I remember being like, what's actually like, what's, what's a crack? Because I was like, you're playing yeah, with your Has like, this just, just, just got a stone in his shoe or something? Is that, is that? <laughs> yeah, I was like, is it just because you're like sitting down? Like, what's the crack? Why are you playing that? But but now, so you've went from literally, you know, I wouldn't, obviously not not to play it down the season of it, but you have recovered and rebuilt yourself that much where it's not even necessarily immediately obvious to, to some people. Um, no, it, it, you're fucking as strong as anyone as I, I know in the gym for especially all your upper body stuff yeah. um, and your knowledge and that and everything else and you've managed to have this fantastic career playing basketball so it's it's, it's, it's fucking impressive really isn't it so what, what would you say mate as a if any of the men listening now whether it's an injury in the gym a pec tear whether it's something in their personal life but in terms of that overcoming adversity what, what tips would you have around that or what, what sort of 
maybe do's and don'ts or anything that you would have advice wise? I, I think I think you know with, with with any type of adversity in life, the first step is fucking accept it. Like Brilliant. accept that's what it is. What it is like yeah. that. It, it what is currently like. Let, let's let's say you're a professional football player. You're playing for it. I think there's an England player who just had to pull out with an injury for. Aye, I, friend. I. Right? So you know you're fucking you're, you're building yourself up, putting all this work in, getting injury. This is just one example, by the way, and something you've been. I've actually done it with two. I missed two Paralympics in the camp before we went through injury. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Beijing and Athens. Because you competed at London, didn't you? You competed at the home yeah, games. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got I got selected for Sydney in 2000 and I was late for training the week before and I got dropped. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I got there eventually. So, that would be me, that. <laughs> surprise <laughs> you, it doesn't surprise you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I had a bit of a um, uh, he heavy weekend, should I say, <laughs> um, before I went to training camp that week. I was only 18. I, I, I was barely 18 years old. Um Anyhow, but what I'm saying is, you know, you, you have these things and and let's say you, you pull up with an injury and all the thing you've been working towards goes, like the that, the football guy we were just talking about. Now, you can fucking, it's not, there's nothing bad with sitting and sulking and complaining. You're a fucking human being with, with emotions, that's going to happen. But the first step for you to pull your fucking self out of that hole is yeah. accept that you are where you are right now. And yeah. there's nothing that can be done about where you are right now. There's something that can be done a moment from now, a minute from now, two minutes from now, a day from now. You see where I'm going with that. Yeah. But where you are right now, there's nothing that you can do because it is right now. So you have to accept that um, you're in whatever situation that you're in. And I think some people find it hard to take. I always say if you take personal responsibility for everything that happens to you, whether it's yours or not, you're taking power and hold over a situation. Which is one hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, and then you know a, a good thing I like to do is okay. What are the things that I can actually do about this now? Not like I'm not talking about hope or fucking, you know, uh, you know, maybe if this happens. No, what are the one hundred percent things that I can do? What are the definites I can do right now to fix this? That might be getting on the phone and fucking speaking to somebody. That might be. You know, and, and owning the situation that you're in, independent on what it is, it might be fucking writing stuff down. It might be taking a little bit of action in some way, shape, or well, it all starts with taking some action in some way, shape, or yeah. form. But you, you've got to accept where you are, and then write down the things that you can do in order to change that situation, That's and then just go and fucking do them. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say it's going to be fucking easy, or you, 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 or it's going to take. It's going to be a quick process. Sometimes when you've, you've got adversity and things happen, it can take months, months and months and months to fucking get yourself out of it, or get yourself on an even keel, or recover, or dependent on what situation you were currently in. Um, but it's it's about acceptance, and then identify those things that you can do to change that, and then, and then get after it. just fucking do it. Class. There's no, there's no fucking secret. Like, you know, I think, I think we've become a society of, you know, what's this hack to do this? What's the secret to do that? What's the short? Yeah. Almost always, the answer is doing the fucking work. Almost yeah. always, I, I would say hundred percent always. The answer comes from just fucking doing it. Just getting it done. Class. Yeah, and, and you know, and you, and you know what? When, when you, when you, when you start the thing, you get the energy to do the thing. When you start, you get the energy to carry on. I always say one of my one of my good, good another good friend, one of my mentors, Paul Mort, uh, he used to always say to me back in the day when I was with him, he says, You're never overwhelmed when you're working on the thing. You're only overwhelmed about stuff or a problem when you're thinking about the problem, but when yes. you're actually yes. attacking it, like when you're yes. actually doing it, yeah. you're so consumed by actually taking action, like yeah. actually working yeah. on the, the program that you need to do for people at work yeah. or speaking to the person or you know when you're actually dealing with it you can't yeah, yeah. be worrying about it in the future if you're actually acting on it now if that makes sense yeah. um so i think i think that's a good one as well the, the next one mate i want to move move on to ties in with confidence and everything else and i think for this is a, an issue for some people depend i think more more so now since covid and everything all the changes in the world i think there's a lot more people doing their own thing trying to get themselves out there 
people maybe starting businesses for the first time or side hustles or just something new, whether it's saying, fuck it, I'm going to go and join a jiu-jitsu gym, I'm going to go do boxing, could be a recreational activity, could be a business. But selling yourself, talking to new people, telling your story, one of the things I love and I'll put for everyone listening, I'll put Dan's social media links in the in the comments below for everyone, but you've got a, a, I wouldn't say, a natural ability, if you like, to tell a story, whether it's because you're a scouser or whatever it is, but it's not actually a scouser. <laughs> oh, everything, everything that happens to you is on your Facebook either the same day or the next year. But in a, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's a good thing. Oh. And I think you've yeah. got a very loyal sort of following and people that are almost watching and laughing and having a good laugh with you on social media. So how how would you, how have you done that? Is is that ability to sell yourself and almost tell stories in terms of business, in terms of life, which I think is a skill really people love storytellers yeah. how, yeah. how how have you built that up and, and and what what lessons would you have from that for the for the people listen maybe someone that's starting a new business or trying to meet new people or selling yourself well it, it, it's it's funny because when i started the business thing i i was completely fucking not me i thought i had to be you know prim proper perfect don't swear yeah. Yeah. Basically everything that I'm not. <laughs> I was yeah. trying to I was trying to be um trying to come across as somebody completely different. And the, a, a, a big defining moment for me and you know Facebook memories tell you are great because it it shows you how you have progressed or uh or in my case how cringeworthy you were or still yeah. I guess. <laughs> no, but for me it was just about understanding that in terms of business people don't i'm going i'm going to go out on a limb now people don't want people don't work with me because they think i'm a great coach i think people work with me because they buy into me as a person yeah so the more the more you are just 100 percent authentic you know and and i think the, the, there is a there is a, a portion of people out there especially online that are trying or the saying that saying they're being authentic and you know full well that they're, they're not because they think by being this type of person is going to get them more money in terms of more clients or whatever the case may be instead of just you know everybody has people that will be attracted to them you've just got to be your fucking self mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're trying to be somebody else, the pipe of people that are gonna are gonna be drawn to you in some way, shape, or form are not gonna be your people. Uh, and with regards to the storytelling, I I guess I, I I don't know. Maybe I've just got a lot of stories to tell, and I've I've just I just like you know um, a, a good way to to practice your storytelling is when you when you were the lads. Yeah. You know you you know you're having a couple of beers and you're. You, you you get dead animated about stuff, and it's it. You sort of lead when you when you're telling a story for me. It's sort of you're leading people down a garden path, and ultimately want to know what happens at the end. Yeah, you've uh, got to get on the end of the garden, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You but you've got to get them there. Yeah, you've got to be interesting enough to fucking get to that point. If people zone out after you know a few words or what, then. You need to, but a great a great way is is to to pr practice storytelling with, with with the lads and um or think of, think of experiences that you've had in your life and and fucking write it down on paper. I, I tell it as a story and read it back and think, well, does that really uh does that really convey what happened in it yeah. and how it happened or would I read that and be like interested or I don't know, but. I, that that's just my opinion on things. I mean, more, I've never been asked that question before. So yeah, like, I think <laughs> I think the more I to, I, that's something that I know certainly with your social media and stuff, and I want to ask you because I think it's useful for people. Because I think I know certainly for me when I was first on social media, I used to actually be the opposite. I used to probably turn it down a lot. Like, and if yes, you ask my mates, yes. and that, I was kind of worried, like, oh, don't want to like not necessarily being professional, but I maybe just not not do or show some stuff. Whereas now. I just exactly. do what I want, and it's a better way. Yeah. It's a better way to do it. And the say yeah. the the way to escape competition is through authenticity and just being yourself, yeah. because yeah. no one else can be you, and you're going to have your exactly. own stories. And people will either be drawn out or not, but it's much much easier, and you'll be able to stand by it. Whether it's meeting new people, whether it's on social media, whatever situation it is, if you are if you're yourself, 
in your yeah. feel, there's a great quote from Gary Vaynerchuk. I think I've used it on the podcast before. It's much better to fall on your own sword. You could be pretending to be someone else for several years and then get yeah. sacked at work or fail anyway. Whereas yeah. at least if yourself and you hit out and you strike out and you try to do your own thing, at least, you, at least you've yeah. got that to live by and you'll be happier standing by it for better or worse, knowing that it's like who or what you actually are or want to be. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I think that's really good, mate. And, and this ties me nicely into the last one. This is something where I know that you're very passionate about it, but mindset, energy, confidence, all mm. big words used a lot by coaches nowadays, but I, I know you and it's something that you practice and you're always talking about it on your social media. So yeah. where... I'll let you go on these for me because I know you've got you, you've got a lot on it. Where do you want to start? What 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 advice would you have? What, how would you define those things? Why are they important? The floor is yours. I think all right, all right, okay. So I, I, if if the the majority, well, all the people that are watching this are, are going to be male. Yeah. Most, yeah. Less of some yeah. women tuning in to get some good looking lads. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, it's really <laughs> all men. <laughs> okay, so you know, typical a, t- a typical guy I would think. Self-confidence is about, you know, I look good. I, I feel good about myself. And for me, I, it's not that. Yeah. Self, True self-confidence is cultivated through overcoming adversity, overcoming intense struggle in various ways. And, and confidence comes through experience. Uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. If you were, you're, you're an ex-football player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's say you'd never played football and this might be a really shitty example because I'm just pulling out my arse here. So, but bear with me. <laughs> if, if, if it's shit, edit it out. <laughs> um, if, 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 you was, if you were asked, right, if you can perform this skill, let's say, let's say load of keepy-ups. Let's yeah. say you can, if you can do 100 keepy-ups, you're going to get a million pounds, but you've got a month to be able to do it. You've never done a keepy-up before. You're not going to be very fucking confident, but if you spend hours every day practicing with that experience comes confidence. Yeah. And it's the same with anything. The storytelling, the more you tell the story, the more confident, the better it's going to come across, the more confident yeah. you're going to be. The more, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think confidence in, in anything comes through going out and meeting girls. If you fucking, if, if, if you, if you, you know, if you, the thought of going speaking to a girl makes you fucking palm sweat, you fucking squeaky bum time and all that kind of stuff and you're really nervous, but you then go and speak to fucking a thousand girls over the course of the year, I'm pretty sure you're going to develop a certain amount of confidence through experience. Yeah. It's just, you've, it's going to, it's like when you, when did, when did you do your first video for social media? Was it oh, like yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Completely different, right? To, to yeah. what you do now, because you gain yeah. that confidence. You'd like the, you know, you're not stopping the video and shouting at your fucking laptop and wanting to headbutt it. And, all yeah, and even now, like, when I when I start when I started the podcast, I think the podcast brought another level of pressure because I knew it was going on YouTube. The intro was different. One of the things as well in terms of repetition, I'm, I'm not sure I've mentioned this on podcast before, but the reason all my mates and that always do on those, oh, you always say you at the beginning and say it, but I do that because I, that settles us down. So I always yeah. say the same thing because if you ask if you ask anyone whoever does any sort of social media content and they want to be able to do it straight away, someone says yeah. me do a video, I can literally pick the phone up and do it immediately yeah. it's because yeah. I know what my first few words are going to be. So I'm not yeah. wondering, oh, how am I going to start? Hello. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I've just jumped on here to do this as people do in the car. I'm just going to talk to you because I don't do any of that because I know what I'm saying all the time. So I'm instantly into a flow. So for me, those yeah. little habits, yeah. those rituals, it's like a pre-workout ritual. I know right yeah. away when I come on how I'm starting, what yeah. I'm saying, and then I'm into yeah. it quicker. And, and you can tell when you, especially when doing these podcasts and talking to people, when people's body language relaxes and the conversation starts flowing more and the quicker you can get in that state, the better that things go. Just like in the gym, when you're warmed up, when you're on a night out and the drinks is flowing or whatever it is, you want to get in that flow state as quick as yeah. you can. And we'll have things yeah. to do it. Um, would you say, mate, with your, your mindset, energy, confidence, meditation, I've got, I've got a monk, for anyone listening, I've got a monk who taught me how to meditate. Arjuna is coming on the podcast next week. So you've got that to come. So what would you say, Dan, for, for all of those things? What practices do you have, whether it's meditation? What, you know, what, what tips do you have? Is it, is it your nutrition? Is it your training? How, how are you building that confidence? And as well as the experience you've said, what, what do you do personally? 
what do we do? To, um, well, like like I said, there's if you if you with the confidence thing, if you if you constantly overcome or if you overcome tough situations, it doesn't matter to to a greater or how how tough they are. Yeah, that's just some confidence in you. But in terms of the, the, the more optimally you're functioning, your body and your mind stands to reason that, that you know you, you're going to be feel better to be able to tackle these things and to tackle yep. life and, and be more confident that way. If you have certain pieces of that jigsaw missing, like let's say your diet's fucking shit, you're putting shit into your body all the time, it's going to make you feel like crap. So you, it's going to come out in the in your energy. It all adds up. If you, yeah, of course it does. If there's something missing. Yeah. Then it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna manifest in some way, shape, or form, in, and in how you are as the per, as a person, yeah, what you what you what you give out there in terms of energy. I think that's I mean, what we talked about before we started as well in terms of we're using both of we're effectively training in the gym is yeah. our vehicle, if you like, to train this into people in terms of their confidence. Because as I've mentioned before, the easiest way to improve your confidence and your self-belief and all these things we're talking about is through having a structured resistance program and going in and having that challenge, that own form of control adversity to then overcome it, to then say, I, I was meant to deadlift this today and I'd done it, or I'd done this on the road machine or whatever piece of kit it is, or equally like a, a different physical challenge or something that then gets you out of your comfort zone. And, and that's that's what we want to do, you know, in yeah. all areas. Yeah, and, and that's why that's why I like to, I mean, for, for me, I just like exercise in general. What like when when we finish this, I'm going boxing. Yeah, um, I'm going to lift today. But for, for example, I like when I'm working with my boxing coach. I like knowing that I'm improving. And that yes. gives me confidence. So I'm getting better. That's why when you go to the gym and you're tracking your workouts and and your your workout volumes going up or your numbers are going in the right direction, that gives you confidence to know that what you're doing is working. And you are work. You, you know you're, you're putting the, the working and you're getting the reward. That is everything going in the right direction. Um, so, I, I mean, yeah, the, the training and nutrition is, is very, very important in terms of how you feel. Um, but all other things that I do, I do breath work, do meditation. Um, sometimes I just like, I call it, I just like putting the world on pause where I'll just, well, I'm not meditating. I'm just sat there in complete silence. And I, I can do that for, I like doing it outdoors if it's sunny, but you know, I can go and go and spend some time on my own somewhere. Just completely disconnect, no phone, no nothing. Um, so like some kind of disconnection. Um, I like to write things down, not necessarily journal about my feelings, but I like to write what I'm working towards now. Cause it's just a constant reminder of where I want to be, how I want to get there, yeah. how I want to feel when I do get there or how I, how I will feel, should I say. Um, but yeah, it, it's not. Um, oh, I'm a big fan of cold water therapy as well. Yeah, I mean, I all, 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 the, all these things are just little pieces of the jigsaw that you know, um, or ingredients to the cake. And if you're missing one of them ingredients, it, it's a bit of a cliche comment, but uh, if you're missing one of the ingredients, the cake's not going to come out right. Yeah, you know, if, 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 and you sometimes know, as well, you know, and I, I notice this with journaling, I, I've been trying to journal more recently because I've I seen a great. There was a great, a great podcast. I was listening to when the lad was saying on that, he was like, all these people that are mega successful are journaling, but because he was doing good, he thought, well, I don't need to do that. And it's like, well, yeah. who are like if you look at like success leaves clues, all these people are doing meditation, journalist things. It doesn't mean you'd be a sheep and follow them all, but it means that you should give it a try and see if there's any benefits. And sometimes you don't know what you haven't got. Like you might think that you're doing good, but actually you do this and all of a sudden you're writing down your goals more often. You're writing down how you feel. Something goes wrong or something's going well. You can look back at your journal and see what you are writing down and see. So I, I always, I've said this a few times, I think subconsciously through the things you say to people and also yeah. the things you write down, sometimes you're trying to give yourself a message, but you're actually not taking it in. It's weird. Yeah. I, I, I found that yeah, massive yeah, yeah. new journal. And if I look back, I can see when I was maybe getting more stressed or when I was doing well, it, it, it is yeah. interesting. Although at the time when I started, I was like, I don't mm. know if I need to be doing it. And I was the same with meditation. And then yeah. when you get into it, you're like, actually, this is making a massive difference in my daily life. And now I preach meditation massively to loads of people. Um, it's, it's, yeah. like, um, it's like, <clears throat> you know, when people come to you for help and they, they, they've never really trained, the, the diet's been shit. And, but they, they've, on the surface, they think, oh, I feel all right. You know, I don't... 
but they don't realise how good they can feel until they experience it. Of and like, so. oh, this is like, this is mad. This is, whoa, what's going on here? And I'll give you another example, mate. The past couple of weeks, I've not meditated as much as I normally would. I'm talking, I've gone days and days and days without doing the things that I know that, just because I've been so busy and, and, and tired, yeah. and it's it, that's an excuse, by the way. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make time for this stuff. Because yeah. it all adds up for you being able to perform in life. And things that I've noticed, things that wouldn't normally stress me out, have been stressing me out. I've been totally fucking negative about certain things, whereas I'm not normally like that. Yeah. And you know, all these little things, I think, fuck, if I, I notice a big, I'm very sensitive to it when I don't do them. Yeah. It's like I sort of change. Yeah. And I fuck, and, and, and work stress, things, I get overwhelmed a lot quicker. You know, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. This is, this is going to tie in perfectly. Like I say, for those who are interested in meditation, the monk, Arjuna, is coming on in a, I think he's going to be on next week. So you can look forward to that. And I will put Dan's information in the comments below because he's got a lot of information on this kind of stuff as well. To finish, mate, quick fire. I know you've got to get your boxing. I've got eight very fast questions, okay? Just first thing that comes into your head. You ready? Yeah. There's no silly. I haven't stitched you up too, but I haven't stitched you up. No, I, I had I, some, I, I, I had some dis- good ones I'd to ask you. I'd be disappointed if you hadn't. No, I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't. Right. So, basketball or gym? Um, basketball, because it's different every time. Bulk or cut? Cut. UK no, or lying. abroad? Oh, mate, abroad. Well, you're in the UK. The minute you come back in the UK. Ah, uh, yeah, no, but abroad, abroad, definitely. Abroad. Right. <laughs> Weights or cardio? Weights. These are where it gets interesting. I'll get the, the last four of the more different ones. What is the worst place you've been? The worst place I've been? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in a jail cell. <laughs> <laughs> we, should have st- we should have put that in at the beginning. It would have opened it up for me. Good clickbait, lad. <laughs> What's the worst place in the world you've been? What country, what place, which town? I know you've done a lot of travelling. Um, Saudi Arabia, but purely for the fact that when I got went there years ago, I was scared to sit on the toilet for a third because I got told of snakes that could come up. <laughs> So I just didn't really, like, feel it. <laughs> Brilliant. What's the best place you've been? Oh. Thailand. Yeah, Thailand was good, wasn't it? We had a good time in Thailand. It was good. We'll have to go back. We need to do that again. Yes. Worst piece of advice or something that you hear repeated that you just disagree with completely? Um, I, I guess this works well for the for the audience when people just say fucking man up like in terms of don't like fucking stop being a pussy like yeah certain certain I, I need to elaborate on this if you don't mind yeah go on yeah so you know sometimes in life that we do need to fucking man up and and, and take for me, man up means set responsibility and fucking sort your shit out. Yeah. Doesn't mean stop being a fucking, you know, quote unquote pussy or stop being a wet wipe. Yeah. And, and you know, but a lot of people will say you need to man up. And I think people have a big, they don't even know what they mean by when they say being man up. They mean stop being a girl. Stop yeah. being, stop being soft. Yeah. I think that's, that's a, that's a really shitty thing to say to somebody. Um, if people had, if people had reason or, or had uh, uh, an ideal of what man up means to them, then yeah, say it, but people just say it willy nilly. And I think with, um, uh, especially in the last year, there, there's there's been, God, I, I think there's over 20, 20, 20 lads that I know that have committed suicide in, in yeah. this particular area. Yeah. Jeez, that's gone a little bit morbid, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but no, but, no, you're right. And I, I agree. I think that sometimes that can be a, uh... Telling someone to pull themselves together can be needed, but other times it can it can be taken the wrong way. So that leads on nicely to the last one. Yeah. What would be, on the other hand, the best piece of advice? Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself, be yourself and, and 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 own own your life. 
own, own, take take ownership, like take responsibility, ownership, and, and be yourself. And, and if you do if you do that, then you're not not only you're not hiding behind anything, uh, and, and you know the book starts and stops with you. You know, if something goes wrong, it's on you. If something goes well, it's on you. Brilliant. Completely self-reliant. Fantastic, mate. That is it. Thank you very much for coming on. We've flown through that. That is pleasure. brilliant. I'm sure I'll get you to come on again in the future so you can elaborate on some of your, your funny stories. But thank you very much for coming on and I really appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure, mate. Thanks, mate. Later. Bye. You've been listening to Aesthetically Trained, the podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and spread the word.